Hey guys, um, I'm doing a little video here to basically derive something called the rocket equation. So this is called the rocket equation. The importance of this is not the rocket equation itself, it's basically the idea of deriving the rocket equation and applying some various operators and actually solving for the rocket equation. So basically, it's not so much getting the rocket equation itself, but the process of constructing the rocket equation and finding solutions. It's a first order differential equation. And this differential equation, right, we're going to try to solve. And the solution of that differential equation, right, is what we call as the general rocket equation. The idea behind the rocket equation is that you have a, a rocket out in space. So here's the rocket. So it's got a a big cone in front and it's got a long body and it's got an engine and this engine right it's got thrust so it's going to the right and I'm going to assume first that the mass of the rocket is given by m it is a function of time so mass is changing as we expel gas from the rocket right the mass of the rocket is being lost uh, the mass of the rocket gets smaller and smaller because uh, the gas is escaping. We're sending mass out the back of the engine. So the velocity is also a function of time because as the gas escapes, this thing gets faster and faster as it pushes more mass of gas thrust. It's sending it out in matter outside. So let's assume that at time t, the mass of the object the mass of the rocket is given by m. The velocity of the rocket is given by v. And we take a, a, the rocket at a time instant later, which is t plus dt. So a differential in time, which you could think of it as a little small delta t. But this differential in time, the rocket is basically, here's the rocket. My handwriting sucks, so that's terrible, but life. So here's my rocket again, here's the thrust. But what happened in that time, right, the velocity, the mass of the rocket is now m dm. So there's a differential in the mass. dm is actually negative. We lost some mass, but the mass has changed by dm. The velocity has increased a little bit by dv. But so in the process, right, of m dm and v dv, a, a mass of material and this mass of material, notice that dm, right, is actually less than zero because the mass is going down. So dm, the small little uh, differential in mass, is actually less than zero. That differential in mass, right, is actually the mass that's ejected. The negative dm is actually being ejected out. I'm also going to assume that the, the gas that's here that's being thrust out in the back as exhaust, right, is traveling with a velocity VE. So what is VE? V is the exhaust velocity. This is the exhaust velocity. So VE, I'll use a capital V, is the exhaust, hopefully I spelled everything correctly, exhaust velocity of gas and it's always with respect to the spacecraft. The spacecraft is the one that's spitting out this, uh, this gas at a certain speed. So exhaust velocity of gas with respect to aircraft or spacecraft. To the spacecraft or rocket or whatever you want to call it. So with this in mind, right, so at time t, the mass is m. At time dt, a time, little time later, the mass has decreased, dm is negative, has decreased into a m plus dm. The velocity has increased slightly because it's already pushed some matter out, v plus dv. And the exhaust velocity is given by v, the exhaust velocity is capital VE. So to model this whole system, we're going to say that the momentum, there's momentum conservation. So momentum conservation basically says the momentum, initial momentum of the rocket is equal to the final momentum of the rocket. So let's calculate the initial momentum of the rocket. So the momentum initial at time t is given by 
m v simply it's it's a one-dimensional motion we don't have to worry about vectors and everything and all your arbitrary directions and the final let's first calculate the final momentum the final momentum is the momentum of this particle going forward the rocket going forward which is m plus dm mass times velocity which is case of v plus dv what is the momentum of the gas going backwards? Well, the momentum of the gas going backwards, right, is given by the mass is minus dm. And it's traveling with a velocity relative to the spacecraft, right? It's traveling with a velocity of v. And so its velocity, right, is um, it's traveling with a v. There's a velocity going backwards, right? So the gas is actually traveling with respect to this. So this is actually V minus V exhaust velocity. There's a minus. So this is the speed of this mass of gas, differential mass of gas that's moving in the opposite direction with the velocity VE with respect to the rocket. So this is VE with respect to the rocket. Actually, I'll put a capital in there and no arrows there. So this is the equation that I would like to deal with. So let's rearrange these things around, equate them. So the initial momentum and the final momentum are equal to each other. So this is mv is equal to m plus dm times v plus dv. And then there's a minus v dm and then minus plus there is a V exhaust velocity, um, dm. Let's expand. So this is now mv is equal to m times v, m times dv. And then there's a V dm, these two terms. And then there is a dm dv minus v dm plus the exhaust velocity v e dm. And you should notice some things are canceling out. So mv on this side cancels this term out here. We see that there's a v dm, there's a v dm minus plus, so that cancels out. And then we're left with, ah, this differential, when dm and dv are smaller, right? Our dm, dv are small numbers, so the square of the numbers, right, of these two small differentials, right, is much smaller than dv and dm equations. So these are first order differentials and these are second order differentials. Second order differentials are much smaller in magnitude than first order differentials, so we can actually equate them to zero in comparison to first order differentials. It is possible that first order differentials do cancel and second order differentials become more important. But right now, only first order differentials are the most important. So we have an equation that says zero is equal, so this whole term dm dv is equal to zero, so you're left with m dv plus v escape velocity, or I'm sorry, the exhaust velocity times dm. So we have a, an equation, a differential equation that describes a rocket that is at from traveling in a certain direction at t and changing its velocity at some time t plus dt. So here's a differential equation. And uh, I'm going to rewrite this equation. I'm going to erase all, everything on the board and actually deal with this one equation. So mdv plus ve dm. So let's erase everything. So this is, so we have ourselves a differential equation. So, I'm going to rewrite it over here. Zero is equal to m dv, where m is the mass of the rocket, v is the velocity of the rocket, plus the exhaust velocity dm. So if I divide by, for example, dv on both sides, so we have another equation that says zero is equal to m plus v exhaust dm divisible by dv. 
And this equation is an example of a first order. Remember the first order because it's a single derivative in V of M with respect to V, first order differential equation. It's the first order differential equation, which we can solve. So the solution of this is actually this, this equation is called the rocket equation. So let's try to solve this equation. And again, uh, um, I wrote it just so that we can see a differential equation in saying mass with respect to velocity. Notice that mass was a function of time, but I'm changing it around so that now we're treating mass as a function of velocity. But it doesn't really matter. The main equation that I need for solving, right, is actually this equation. I'll start from here. So let's go over to here and start off with uh, 0 is equal to m dv plus v. The escape velocity is a constant, dm. I'm going to basically divide by m on both sides, and so we're left with 0 is equal to dv plus v exhaust velocity over dm over m. So the main idea right now is that I would like to integrate in time. So I'm going to multiply by an integral operator. The integral operator, I'm going to select time. So I'm going to say that I'd like to evaluate this differential in terms of time. So implicitly, I would like to do the calculation in terms of time. So I'm going to multiply by the integral operator t equals 0 to t on both sides. So Actually, it doesn't really matter the order, but uh, I can rearrange this in a different way, but I can multiply through. But uh, uh, anyway, so let's multiply through everything with uh, that integral operator. So we're looking at zero integral. Actually, you know what? Because I don't want to confuse you, so I'll move everything to one side. I'll move this term to the other side and rewrite it in terms of dv over ve minus is equal to dm over m. And I'll now multiply by that integral operator on both sides. And so now we're left with the integral t is equal to t equal to 0 to t. Notice this t symbol is not v. v and t are different. When I do this, right, I'm implicitly assuming I'm integrating d with respect to dv, but then I'm implicitly assuming that v is a function of time. So when I put this operator on both sides, here on the right-hand side, right, this is actually saying I'm integrating dm but I'm implicitly assuming that mass is a function of time. It's an implicit idea. So when I use that operator, I'm actually constructing a due differential equation, an integral equation, I'm sorry, an integral equation where I've assumed that V is now a function of time after I've done the integration. So the next step is let's solve this equation. So the integral of dv, ve, v comes out. So this is minus. I'm going through slowly the steps because just in case you kind of forgot your integrals. And this OK. And uh, I'll rewrite the equation on top. So let me erase all this and I'll rewrite this equation and then I'll continue with the derivation. I'm using up the board a lot because I'm trying to make it large so that everybody can see this. So next we have 1 over v, the escape velocity, the integral, just copying it down, t is equal to 0. Notice the t is not v. So the integral of v is just v and from time t. So this is now 1 over ve minus square bracket of v taken from t is equal to 0 to t. I'll put a t in here so you understand that implicitly v is a function of time. On this side, right, we have the integral of 1 over m, which is logarithm of m, which is a function of time integrated 
from t is equal to 0 to t. So this means that I can write this as 1 over ve. So let me erase this bottom half. It's confusing. So this is now 1 over ve minus of parentheses v at t minus v at 0. And that's equal to the logarithm of m at t minus the logarithm of m at 0. So this is now minus v at e, parentheses. And I'll actually, v at 0, right? I'm just going to donate it by v at 0. So this is v at t minus v sub 0. So I don't have to keep putting zeros everywhere. Actually, I still have to, but at least reduce it. And logarithm m t, that's going to be just a logarithm of m at t over m 0, where m at 0 is just m sub 0. I take the exponential on both sides, and uh, we're left with actually m at t is equal to m at 0 exponential of minus v at t minus v at 0 divisible by the escape velocity of the gas. This equation, right, maybe you solved for v in terms of mass, but whatever, but this equation is actually the rocket equation. So this is a solution of the first order differential equation. And uh, I did this calculation so that you can understand the steps involved in constructing the first order differential equation. The rocket equation itself is not important to us. It's just the process of constructing the differential equation using integral operators, using an integral operator that is with a variable t, where we implicitly assume that the variables that we're integrating are now functions of t, for example. So this is uh, the rocket equation.